Hello everybody, Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com. Today let's take a look at the step input improvements in Cubase 13. So we're told we have some improvements on the step input in terms of the key editor. Let's have a look at what we have. I'm going to start with a MIDI part, double click to open it up. And in order to do this, I have to make sure I have it on my toolbar. So I go up to the toolbar and I right click and I come down to make sure the option that says step MIDI input is checked. That enables this kind of thing up on the toolbar. Then if I come up to the toolbar and I hit the button that stands for the step input, wherever my cursor is, little brackets go around it. And if I move my cursor, I can see where that blue step is and I let go of the cursor and the blue step moves to wherever my cursor is. If I move my cursor around with my numeric keys, for example, a one or a two, that moves the cursor to the beginning or end, but notice the step input cursor remains wherever it is. If I go to my arrow keys, then I can begin moving the step input cursor as well. If I have a loop point set up here, the step input cursor will only remain in the loop area. If I turn the loop off, continue to use my arrow keys, I can move that step input cursor wherever I want. I'm going to turn the loop back on and move my cursor within the loop. One of these improvements they're adding is this length quantize. If I go back up to my toolbar and I right click, I now see that I have an option that says length quantize. So I'm going to select that and that gives me another drop down and it actually says L quantize. If I hit this drop down, I can see I have all the kinds of things I would normally have in a quantize list. And I can choose the option that says quantize link, which is at the top. If I do that, then whatever I have set for my quantize will be this quantize length. But I can set them independently if I want start off with them being linked. So I have a 16th note over here. Now I have various options of how the notes are going to get entered here. And I'm going to use my keyboard to enter them. But over here on the left panel, if I open up the scale assistant, because I have a chord track in place already, I can hit this option that says use the chord track and go to the drop down and decide to use chords or chords and scales. I'm just going to stay on chords. Then I can take this option that says snap the live input. And what that means is as I hit the notes, the notes are only going to be what's in the chords. Anything that's not in the chord, no matter what I play, won't get recorded. Let me show you what I mean. First, I'm going to uncheck the snap live input. And now when I play some notes, it starts to record them. I'm just playing random notes. But it just keeps playing pretty much the same notes, because that's all I'm playing is the same notes. I'm going to finish all the way through this pattern here. So now, even though the chords are changing, my MIDI notes stayed the same all the way through. And sometimes you get lucky and it may sound halfway decent, but most of the time you'll get a lot of out of tune notes and the results won't be really anything you want. Let me control Z back out of this. Now I'm gonna hit this snap live input. I'm gonna play basically those same notes again, but it's gonna look at whatever chords I have here. It's gonna make sure that the notes follow the chords. Here I go. Again, I'm just playing the same notes, but it's adjusting the notes to the chords. And then now if I play that, pretty amazing stuff. I'm going to change over to a piano sound. Let's change the length now to an eighth note. I'll keep the snap to live input. And I'm just going to play the same eighth notes over and over again. And then we have something like this. If I go to this length quantize, change it from the quantize link to some other value, let's make it a real small 132nd note. Because the quantize is still set for an eighth note, it's going to put notes in at the eighth notes. But they're going to come in at very tiny little 132nd notes. So again, if I play something, it drew all these notes in at eighth notes, but it made them tiny little 132nd notes in terms of their actual length. And then listen to that. And this step input works with chords as well. If I just start hitting chord keys, and then play that back, Hey my friend, it's Andrew here, and I want to ask you, are you looking to increase your level of understanding and expertise with programs like Cubase, WaveLab, and other music software? 
as you're listening to others teach you, you think the information is good, but you feel like you're not understanding things exactly the way you would like to? Presenting the all-new Digital Audio Manual Preferred. This is a series of videos that will help move you along the path from wherever you are now to a higher level of knowledge and understanding. The whole concept is based on taking the vast majority of information that's available in the manuals of some of your favorite programs like Cubase or WaveLab or many others that are in the works and then presents them to you in a fresh new way. All these videos are laid out like the manual. The subjects are titled like the manual. The information is searchable like the manual. All with one gigantic difference. Everything is demonstrated in real-time situations. It gives you examples and processes to learn and use all the information. And you're going to see, just like so many have done already, it's literally a treasure chest of hidden and rarely explained features and functions, all leading you step-by-step step from the beginning to end, empowering you with a new language set and the programs you may have already been using for years, or even if you're just getting started. So if this sounds interesting to you, come and be part of a clear path to a better way to learn. Click on the link below to get access, and I will see you on the inside. All right, let's get back to our discussion. Now up on our toolbar with our step input, we also have a button right next to it that stands for the MIDI input. Let's talk about these buttons for a minute. When you're on the step input, I'm going to remove all the existing notes first. But when you're on the step input, and I'm going to go to my MIDI keyboard and start hitting notes, as I begin hitting notes with the step input on, as the notes reach the end of this loop point, the loop will go back to the beginning. And if I continue to hit these notes again, it'll actually keep adding notes on top of my existing notes. You may not even see them because if they're the same notes, it'll look like it's doing nothing. It's actually just stacking more notes up on top. It doesn't replace anything. If I change to a different note, it'll just kind of fill those in. Bottom line is, as long as I stay on this step input, this continues to just add more notes. And maybe you want to do that, but maybe you don't. So let's do this. Again, if I delete all these notes, I'm going to re-enter some notes with my step input. And I'm going to go all the way to the end. At this point, my loop point has started over again. But now if I go up to the step input, and instead I hit this button next to it that says the MIDI step input, click on that, it actually deactivates the step input. What this allows you to do is kind of after the fact, re-edit or reassign your notes. It's not going to write over everything. It's actually going to move your MIDI notes. For example, if I click this first note, and then I'm going to go someplace higher up on my keyboard, maybe an octave higher, and I hit a key, it has now moved that note all the way up to that high key. And it's advanced the selection to the next note. And if I again hit another higher key, it's going to move that note up to the higher key. And then again, it advances to the next note. With this option, you can quickly reassign your notes that you've already played to something completely different. Once it finishes the cycle, cursor goes back to the beginning. Because there's no more notes selected, it doesn't advance through this anymore. If you want to continue to edit things, you'll want to reselect a note. Maybe I want to reassign this note. And then I start playing, and that's what gets reassigned. And every note after that will advance and get reassigned. If I have my chord track up here and my snap to live input connected, what this allows me to do is change to different notes that are assigned to the chords. So for example, if I go through this part, but then I decide maybe I want these lower, so I click on the first note, and then I just play some random notes in a lower area. Again, the step input is reassigning them, but it's putting them on chord notes. And now when I play that back, Maybe I want just these notes reassigned, so I'm going to play these notes randomly. And then maybe I want these notes reassigned, so I click on these and play these randomly. Then I get some kind of effect like this. So you get all kinds of options when you start using this step input and this MIDI input to reassign it. The other thing to be aware of Sometimes you get these little three dot extra options. Many of your buttons on your toolbar will show you this. When you click this, drag it to the right, it will reveal extra buttons. In this case, it's telling you that you have the option to not only record the pitch or turn that off if you want, or next to it, you have the option to record the velocity and turn that on or off. For example, if I turn the pitch off, let me bring my controller lane up a little bit so you can see it better. And I go to the first node and I select it. 
and I go down in my controller area and make sure I can see velocities, I can see all these different velocities for these different notes. If I leave the pitch off and just the velocity selected, and again, I start moving through these notes with just random hits, every time I hit the note, depending how hard I hit it, it's gonna rewrite the velocity. For example, I'm gonna hit this next note very soft. And it wrote this velocity very low. If I hit this next note very hard, it moved this velocity way up and it keeps moving and progressing through these different notes up here and rewriting the velocities for me. I'm gonna hit all of these and go soft hard for every one of them. I'm gonna hit a few soft in a row and then a few hard in a row. And you can see it's written all these different velocities. Listen to the difference that's made in the sound. You could sit here and draw these. And again, we're only working with four bars. Imagine if you have 20 bars or 30 bars and you wanted to readjust all this. You could sit here and manually redraw it all. But look how quickly I could reassign these velocities just by doing this. You have another option over here, this little padlock. And this stands for keeping your existing notes. So for example, if you wanted to build a harmony part or adding just a different level of notes, if I click this padlock, and again, I go back to edit my first note. Let's say I play a note someplace completely different. It's going to draw that note in and not affect the notes that were written above it. If I continue to play a bunch of lower notes, it's drawing in these notes in the lower area and it's not affecting any of these upper notes. And then maybe I get an effect like this. The possibilities are endless, as they say. All right, it's going to wrap it up for today. As always, if you haven't already, click the link below this video to learn how you can get access to the all-new Digital Audio Manual Preferred. It's the clear, step-by-step -step solution showing you not only the tips, but all the secret and typically never talked about features that'll take you to a higher level of using your software. If you've been searching for an all-in-one solution to take you from start to finish and learning Cubase and WaveLab and other music software, this is exactly what you've been looking for. So click on the link below and come and be part of the clear path to a better learning experience. So today we took a look at the step input improvements in Cubase 13. We took a look at all the toolbar buttons, quantize settings, the loop options. We learned how to navigate with the arrow keys, learned about inputting notes and chords, saw some of the differences between the step input versus the MIDI input. And then we went through a whole bunch of different sound examples just to see it all in action. And we'll continue to move through all these different features and functions in Cubase. As always, it's great to have you guys here and I'll see you on the next video.